Well, when it comes to fueling the energy of Olympic athletes, the right diet and nutrition plays a key role in determining who gets a medal and who goes home empty-handed. But there's a bit more to it than simply counting calories. Joining us is the head of sports nutrition at Aspitar and Aspire Sports Academy, Daniel Kings. Daniel, thank you very much for joining us. First of all, we have 28 different sports at the Olympics. What are like some of the different like nutritional requirements for like different sports and different athletes? For example, let's take a weightlifter, a male weightlifter, and a female or a small female distance runner. Well, you're right. The, the demands are very different between those two athletes. Um, let's take the gymnasts first. Um, they have high nutritional requirements, but um, very limited calories we can feed. So we have to get the um, maximum amount of nutrition with very little in some cases. And you compare that to a weightlifter who is more power and strength predominantly um, and whose, whose goals are to increase muscle mass and stay lean, where we're able to feed them a little bit more calories and protein-based calories. So it's kind of easier to feed the weightlifter, really, than it is to feed um, the gymnast. However, they're both kind of constrained with their body types and total body weights for their sports. So th there can be challenges around competition time with those. How controlled are the athletes' diet? Again, if, if it's a weight class sport, for example, um, boxing, judo, um, they have to be controlled pretty much you know, all of the year, really. But they are humans, athletes. So what we try and do is they have to focus hard during their core preparation periods and competition periods. But you know, we allow them some cheap meals along the way. And, and especially in their off-season, we encourage them to, to be like normal human beings, their own age you know, socialize and enjoy their friends and use food as part of that. What do they get to have, like, leading up, like, building to the actual competition, to the event? So if we take something like the Olympic Games at the moment, the hard work's really been done. So actually, the athletes have got quite a bit of time on their hands. So the main problem we have is border meeting. And we find the same in the village as well when the athletes go in. So really, it's a case of trying to be quite strict. And although they you know, may still a bit sore after their, feel a bit sore after their training, the energy demands and the whole sort of physiological demands of their training is so different. So it's about educating the athletes to control their eating, control their portion sizes, um, and be pretty disciplined to make sure they don't undo all the gains they've been working so hard for you know, a couple of weeks out from a competition. Okay, so we spoke about the nutrition's role in uh, their performance. Now yeah. let's talk about injury. Like how do they, do they prevent, do they heal injuries? Sure. Injury is a really interesting and developing area with nutrition, something in Aspatar we really, we really sort of specialize in. Um, what injury does, it finds out people who aren't very good with their diets very quickly. Uh, when somebody gets injured, especially if it's a long-term injury, um, they lose a lot of their muscle mass very quickly, and that can be up to sort of five kilos in some people you know, over the course of about four weeks, which is a lot for an athlete to lose. So what we know is that certain nutrients in the diet, things like sort of key proteins, um, you know, they, they really do help support muscle mass in the early stages of injury, but we also take a real food first approach and we try and increase the amounts of fruits and vegetables in the athlete's diet and, and reboot their mindset around those foods because we know they have a real positive effect on injury, healing and rehabilitation. Daniel Kings, the head of the sports nutrition at Aspitar and the Spy Academy, thank you very much for that. Thank you.